Welcome to Make Something. I'm David Picciuto. Today we are going to perform a little experiment. I found this 30 year old camera unopened in the package at Goodwill for $3. What makes this so special is this camera came with a roll of film that expired in 1990. We are going to take this camera out, shoot 24 frames and then develop the expired film in my kitchen and see what happens. This has the potential to be super cool. I'm excited. Check it. Long before I was a woodworker, I was very big into film photography. I used to take a lot of art photos. I was even an assistant wedding photographer. And at one time I had a job at a local newspaper where I was the darkroom technician and I developed all the film and scanned all the negatives. And recently I've been getting back into film photography got a fairly large collection of film cameras, instant cameras, as well as 35 millimeter film and medium format film. As I'm getting back into film photography, I found this at the Goodwill. This is unopened, still in the package, a Kodak point and shoot camera. It looks like the date on the back says 1987. So it could be from that year or a couple years past. But what I want to do is open this up put this roll of film in the camera, take some photos and then develop it. One of the issues of using expired film is you're going to get color shifts and it might not expose correctly. So you're going to get kind of a grainy look to it. Those are all things that I want. I want it to look weird and artsy and, and old. So there's a chance that this might not work at all. But if it does, I think it can have a really cool effect. Let's open this up, see what we have, and then go take some shots. I paid $3 for this at the Goodwill. This might turn into something interesting. We got open and close. We got the rewind, the shutter release, and then one more to set your ISO. I was gonna try the original batteries, but there's some crud on there. So I went in the house and I got some new ones. Kodak Gold 200, they still make this film. I actually prefer using 400 film or even 800 because I, the reason I love film photography is actually seeing the grain and seeing the imperfections of film. And the higher you get up with that ASA, uh, the more grain it is, meaning it's more sensitive to light. So like a 100 film, you would use in bright daylight. An 800 film, you would use in low light. Uh, so this is 200. I wish it was 400, but it's going to be so gnarly and color shifted that I think it'll be, I think it's going to be cool. It's so cheap. It feels so awesome. So we are back from our little photo walk in downtown Toledo. We have our roll of film. It's rewound. And I've got a dark room bag where I am going to open this up where I can throw it onto the reel and develop it. I've got an entire video on developing your own film. So we're just gonna skim through this part of the video. I did find the expiration date of this film, which is 08, 1990. If this is 31 years old, my expectations are, and we'll see if I'm right, but I've got a feeling that the film is going to be a little bit underexposed. I've got a feeling there's going to be a color shift. I don't know which way it'll shift, um, but I'm assuming like a magenta. So all, I think all my whites are going to be either green, teal or magenta. 
and I got a feeling it's going to be really grainy. So I think all of these things can play into a cool look. So hopefully this comes out and this wasn't a wasted day. Um, but uh, this is the nature of shooting with 31 year old expired film. This is it, this is everything right here. I'm, I'm nervous and I'm also super excited. I'm always excited after developing a roll of film, but I'm super excited about this because I bought that camera at that Goodwill like two years ago and just building up the anticipation. So really, really hoping this works. So this is the moment of truth. Ooh, that does not, I don't know. Oh, there are frames on there. There are photos. It's really dense. It is really dense. That's the color it should look like. This is the color that we have. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's quite a difference. So, uh, the this will be this will be interesting. Now it's time to scan them and see what they look like. My preferred method here at home is to use a camera with a macro lens and then some sort of uh, white backlit source like a tablet or a phone. Uh, there are easy ways to do this and then there are more expensive, more complicated, better result ways. And we are, what we're gonna do today is a hack. I will raise and lower my camera until I can get that 35 millimeter to take up the entire frame and then I can focus. I have gone ahead and I took a digital photo of each one of the frames. We are now in my office. I have imported those photos into my computer and I used a plugin to invert them. We have 23 photos and not all of them came out. The ones that didn't come out, not the film's fault. It was actually my fault for not understanding what the minimum focus distance of the camera was. So in a few cases, I was too close to the subject and it just came out super blurry. A blue cast over all the photos, lots of grain, especially in the shadow areas. And we have what looks like either light leaks or where the film has degraded along the edges. We're not gonna go through all 23. I have picked my 10 favorite. I also took an iPhone photo of each one of these scenes so we can compare them. Let's start off with the high level bridge here in Toledo, Ohio. In the shadow areas, you can really, really see the heavy grain in there. And I really like the look. I like the look of all of these photos. This is so cool. The blue of the bridge and the green of the trees did not come out. The colors are kind of muted. And then along the bottom, it looks like a light leak or maybe the film has degraded along there. It's not consistent in every photo. So I'm not real sure what that is. And then we can see the iPhone version here, the crazy detail and the way the iPhone can handle the super high dynamic range. So moving on to the next photo, what drew me to this scene was the repeating patterns of the bikes and then the bright yellow and the blue of the bridge in the background. Those colors did not come out in the film version here, but I still like the colors a lot. It has a very vintage old look to it. This is the Owens Corning building in Toledo, and I like the way the curved edges of the building kind of flow into the background. And then we have the high level bridge there, and then this pathway. I think I could have took a better photo with the not having the light right there. I'm getting better, I'm trying to get better. But here we have what looks like that light leak again, very heavy along the bottom and then very heavy along the top. And that really shows up in darker areas of, of the photos. So moving on, this is that yellow structure out in front of that building looking up into the sky. And that yellow definitely did not come out, but I love the, the pattern. I love the look of this. It has a very artsy feel to that. And then moving on, this is one of my favorites. So this is slightly out of focus. The grain is really heavy and you would never know that this was taken downtown Toledo. Uh, just these, these beautiful flowers. I love the contrast of the, the vivid yellow and the white of the flowers. So that is really cool. This is a brewery downtown. This photo would have been 20 times cooler if it was a little later in the day and the neon light was on. 
it is what it is. Again, we have the light leak along the edge there. And then we have moved our way onto the high level bridge and I am looking straight up into the sky. I just kind of like the way this looked to my eye. This one does not have a lot of grain and it all has to do with the auto exposure of that camera. Moving along, we found these old railroad tracks that were piled up in this yard. And I like the way they just kind of goes into infinity. And I use the flash on this. Now the foreground is a little out of focus and there's that bright ball of flash right there. And I really like that look. It looks so vintage. Uh, it does look like it was taken with a point and shoot or a disposable camera. And we don't really get that anymore with modern cameras. I really wish I would have used the flash more in this, but I was afraid the first time using this camera that it was going to ruin a lot of the photos. And then uh, again, we are up on the bridge looking downtown Toledo. Not a lot of detail in this photo. You know, we got the plastic lens of the cheap camera and then we got the 400 grain film along with it being super expired. It's just not a lot of detail. Uh, but it looks old and vintage. And then finally, we have this photo here that did not come out the way I envisioned it, but it still came out pretty cool. We have the flower in the foreground, which I was hoping to be in focus, but we were too close to it. And so it is out of focus. And then you got the, the city skyline in the back. Those were my 10 favorite out of the 23. You can go view them on my website if you wanna look and see the grain for yourself. I will also have physical prints available for all 10 of these photos. I'm going to make a picture frame that is gonna hold all 10 of these photos. I'm not sure what it's gonna look like just yet, but I know it's going to be out shaped with weird dividers, but it's going to lock this day and this moment in time. If you purchase any of these prints and make a frame for yourself, I may feature you in the build video for this frame. I don't know when that video is gonna come out, but it's going to be at least a month. So you, you, you'll have some time. But, I, but it would be fun to feature some of your picture frames, framing some of my photos. In a few days, I have a video coming out on how to develop color film. It's not as hard as you might think, and it, it's really fun, so look forward to that. I'm also going to make a video on how to scan negatives. There are multiple ways to do it, either with a camera or a scanner or a dedicated device. Like I mentioned before, I used to shoot film all the time when I was younger and develop lots and lots of black and white. I've never developed color film until now. I've been slowly getting back into film photography, buying some equipment, picking some things up and taking photos. The thing that really kicked me in the pants to get back into it was Destin from Smarter Every Day did this video about film and how it works. And I was just, blown away by his video so please go check that out if you think i deserve it i would appreciate your subscription we do all kinds of fun things here at make something so that is going to wrap it up we'll see you soon with another fun project as always be safe have fun stay passionate and make something